In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I am uh, pleased and uh, feel joy and blessing to speak to you, especially to speak about St. Cyril of Alexandria, whom I love and all of you love as a model, as a saint for us. <coughs> and uh, the topic is St. Cyril and the Nestorial Controversy, which is the main part in the service of St. Cyril as the Pope and Patriarch of Alexandria, Archbishop of Alexandria, from the 412 to 444. And it took out of this 32 years of his patriarchate, over 25 years, that's focusing mainly on this issue of Nestorianism. And because before we go into some historical details and how he dealt with this uh, issue, I just want to highlight two major things. The first one is four major characteristics of St. Cyril, which enabled him to uh, uh, lead the church, the whole church, of, to overcome this uh, heresy. Especially a heresy taught by a patriarch, a patriarch of an important see, like the see of Constantinople. These four characteristics of St. Cyril, uh, through the grace of God, helped him. First is, he is a uh, righteous theologian. St. Gregory is a theologian, we speak about who is a theologian. He mentioned two things about the theologian. Number one, of course, he's deep in the theological studies and knowledge but also deep in his spiritual life. And St. Cyril is a good example of that. He is deeply rooted in the spirituality of Christianity because he grew up under guidance, as you know, his uncle, uh, Pope Theophilus, the 23rd Pope of Alexandria. But for him, the model of St. Athanasius was a very clear, in his teaching. But I think also the model of his life, spiritual life. Because St. Athanasius is a given as the example of a person who are very deep theologically and deep spiritually. That's why he was exiled five times, lived in the desert and suffered a lot. For St. Athanasius, St. Cyril, he didn't see St. Athanasius because St. Athanasius rested in the Lord in 373, and St. Cyril was born in 378. But he heard about him from his mother. Because, as you know, that is uh, the mother of St. Cyril and, and his uncle. They came as orphans to Alexandria, and St. Asenasi took care of them. And they go under his guidance, and his mother get married, and his uncle, he continued, and then he became the 23rd patriarch. So he heard about this great man in first hand about his spirituality, his care, his kindness, his love, and all these spiritual characteristics which influenced St. Cyril in his way, and as we heard yesterday from Father George, about his letter to St. John, his joy for peace, for forgiveness, for moving forward, not, for, not uh, yani focusing on the past. Not only that, but as St. Athanasius was sent to the desert to live for three or four, five years under the guidance of St. Anthony the Great, St. Cyril also was sent to the desert and he was under the guidance of St. Serabion the Great. And he spent five years there. And this time, he didn't go to study there. 
but to learn a life of prayer, asceticisms, the spirituality of, of the desert. And this is reflected in his love to the Lord Jesus Christ, which is very clear when you read his commentaries, because Sam Cyril has other writing, especially his commentaries, and it's very clear to see the spirituality of him. The second characteristic is he's a great theologian. Uh, he grew up in Alexandria uh, with all the availability, with uh, the secular studies, as uh, philosophy, rhetoric, and all the, uh, related to Alexander as a center of culture, center of education in the whole Roman Empire, or Byzantine Empire, and also the Patriarchate of Alexander. The Sea of Alexandria, with some, uh, and the, the, the Alexandria tradition of origin, Clement, St. Didymus, and of course, St. Athanasius. And very clear that is uh, St. Cyril, uh, he, he well read to St. Athanasius, and actually he, he organized and his writing. Uh, yani is San Asanasius is a small, more organized way related to the time. But also, he read the other fathers because he came after them, like John Chrysostom, uh, Gregory the Theologian, uh, St. Basil, and all these great names he came after. But also, he also know about the Latin fathers whether he himself knew Latin, or there is translation available in Alexandria to, to help him to know uh, very well the writing of St. Ambrose and uh, the other great names in the, uh, in the Latin. Uh, so this helped him for uh, the, and his knowledge. That's why we call him in our church uh, the pillar of faith, Amud al-Iman. And I heard the, from the first lecture I hear from Father uh, George, he's speaking about the, sea, the base and the sea. <laughs> and the tradition, San Athanasius is the basis, and then the three, uh, San Basil, San Gregory, the theologian, and San John Chrysostom, and then the seal is San Cyril. So San Cyril, in the, in the, in the tradition of uh, all the churches, is have a special position. And he contributed a lot in, in, in Christology. And as I mentioned in the beginning yesterday, in our dialogue, in the Orthodox dialogue, the reference which we took when we discussed Christology is St. Cyril, uh, right, that is, uh, which show how he is the uh, authority in theology, especially in, in Christology. The third characteristic is an expert in the canon of the church. And this is a part maybe they don't highlight so much, but we have to remember that the Saint Theophilus, uh, he was the reference of canon in the, in the church at his time. Uh, he was expert in the canon and he learned from him. And this was the reason why he was invited to go to the Oak Council because of his expertise in, in the canon of the church. And San, As San Cyril, he was very, very careful about the canon of the church, knowing it, and as we will see, how he did not interfere in the Nestorian controversy until the teaching reached Alexander, because it's not under his jurisdiction. And how to interfere in another diocese, in another sea, even this So he waited until this is to come to him, and the writing of the stories spread among the monks and spread in Alexander. Then he find a reason to speak and to, to write to him. The same also how he guided the Council of Ephesus, the full, how he followed, and we will come to it. But I just want you to, in, 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 in background, to be aware about these four uh, uh, things. The fourth one is, 
I don't know whether this title is right or not, a church map. It's a church map, like we call a state map. He, that, and this is one of the things which I appreciate very much in San Cyril, when I follow in details how he handled this issue. He was very aware about the, the politics of the church and of the empire. I mean the politics here is not always negative things, but mean how things are running. Because to have a cause, but you have to be realistic. You want to achieve a certain goal. Just to write, it won't change anything. But to achieve the, the goal, uh, which so you have to understand the uh, the, the, uh, the, what is the politics around you. Of course, being in Alexandria with all the, uh, the uh, different current in Alexandria, his, his dispute with the governor of Alexandria, the story of Hebatia, the violence, all of this gave a kind of experience which you handle such kind of, uh, of situation. Of course, he knew very well about the politics in the church in general uh, through his involvement with his uncle, with Pope Theophilus, in, uh, in the issue of John Chrysostom's and the issue of the Tall Brothers. It gave him a hint about things happening. He came also after a history of councils when the, when the, the, the councils started in the church as something which is good to, for unity, for faith, but it, it, it was not the case in every council. How the council started to be used and manipulated to get rid of some of your opponents. He understands this. He understands that is the role of the imp imp emperor. And even if the council agree, but the, the emperor would not ratify, it have nothing. So he has to know what is uh, who is the emperor, how to reach him. And the emperor is in palace, and the palace, any palace, there's politic here, especially the woman of the palace. And he has experience of Exodia, the empress, and how she manipulated things when she had some problem with John the Chrysostom. So he had similar to her, which is Bulgaria, <laughs> but he, he, he knew how to handle it. That's why he, he understands the, the, what's going on in the palace, and that is helped him how to navigate among this. He knows that is the issue of with Nostorius, even it's related to the, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ as one, one person, but it touched St. Mary Theotokos. And he know how people, the simple people love St. Mary. And he benefits from that. And how he motivates the, 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 the congregation, speaking about St. Mary, and how to present those who follow Nostorius as anti St. Mary. He knows also the power of monks. And he could mobilize the monks in, to come and support him. And, the, and you know, that is uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, in Constantinople. Uh, they put pressure on the emperor, as we will come uh, in more details about this uh, history, uh, about uh, these events. So this four characteristic of San Cyril, that being a righteous theologian, a great theologian, expert in the canon of the church, and a churchman who understand what is going on with the evil or good and how to benefit, even to give gifts. And one of the issues which again is St. Cyril, that is he sent gifts, which is true. One of his letters, he gave a list of the gifts. <laughs> but there is difference between to bribe and gifts. Bribe, you give money or things because you want to achieve something illegal to your right. But to give gifts, because this was a custom at that time, 
And also he was in Egypt. Egypt was a rich country. It was a bread basket for the whole empire. The patriarchate in his time was a rich patriarchate, has a lot of resources. And he, he sent, he was very generous in, in sending gifts for, uh, for, for people. But we don't take it in a negative way. Because the purpose of it is clear. And he's, he's not asking for favor for himself. He's defending the faith. But we live in a world that we have to be realistic on this world. His way of success and his victory uh, uh, to show us like a, a road map to help us in when we face a challenge. And I mentioned seven things. And you, when you follow with me about the events, we just remember this seven things, which help us when we face a difficult situation. And I see the way which St. Cyril uh, dealt with it is to help us. Number one, to understand the issue. To understand the issue well. And when I started the, the, the wrong teaching of, of Nestorius to spread, he did not depend on to hear about it, but all just to read one documents. I mean, Nostorius was a patriarch, and his sermons, there are scribes to write, and make copies, and send. And he spent it uh, from, the winter, from the winter of uh, 428 till the middle of 429, yeah, almost uh, th th uh, two thirds of a year of a year, just focusing on reading the manuscripts of the sermon of Nostorius. Yani. So this helped him to go deeper in what is behind his teaching. And there is difference between just I pick a word of sentences in the sermon. And between, there is, he finds this is a certain teaching. It's not just someone who that they don't like a certain title for St. Mary, but it's something behind it, and something deep, and something which affects the salvation. And, and that is he came to right diagnose. And he came to right diagnose of the issue. Where is the problem? The problem is to believe that this Christ came on a person, or assume a person, a human person. And that's why in reconciliation with, with St. John, uh, John of Antioch, he focused on that. He didn't ask a list of things, you have to approve it. <laughs> but the singleness of the person of Christ is a measure of things. It's a measure of things. He reached to it by reading. So, don't jump for, for, for judgment, but just read. Give you yourself time yani, yani to spend uh, nine months or so just reading and focusing to understand. That's very patient, very careful, one with this great intelligence of, of St. Seal. The second is he prepared himself well. And he didn't just read, but he prepared the famous dossier to respond to the teaching of, San, uh, of, of Nostorius, and he bring a quotation, father quotations, from Greek and Latin. And he didn't depend on San Athanasius or, or San Clement, but he also bring for Ambrose and other Latin fathers. Because he know this issue is not only related to the Greek world. And this, this uh, preparation he did before starting the, the fight. And before sending to Nostorius anything, he just prepared himself. Thirdly, he tried to solve this issue peacefully. That's why he communicated with Nostorius. And he sent to him. He didn't start to attack him. 
يعني even his his holy resurrection or Easter message in 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 the year of four twenty nine, he didn't mention anything about him. And and if you follow the letters, he he sent to him very in very kind way, very respect to him, to tell him. يعني all the title which he deserved as a patriarch. He only changed it after the council condemned him. But always he speak with him in very respectful way, very organized, even with the response coming from Mastur, was very nervous and attacking him. Then he prepared the field. He find that is the matter will not be solved through letters. He have to go to the fight. Have to fight. Now he is facing the patriarch of Constantinople, and this patriarch coming from Antioch has friends there. So at least two seas. He does not. He may be with not will be with him Constantinople and Antioch. That's why he he felt the importance of Rome. An important of Rome. To be with him, and of course, the Sea of Rome is an, an, an important uh, uh, sea, and that's why when he prepared this to say, he sent it to Rome first. He did not condemn the Nestorius in Alexandria until Rome condemned him, and yani he waited. Until the Rome to condemn him. Now, and the Catholic interpreted in a different way today. You know, he need a permission from the Pope of Rome, and that is their own interpretation. But actually, Saint Cyril prepared everything, and he was very clever, and he translated the dossier into Latin, and he didn't send them a Greek documents because he doesn't know whether they have availability. To, to translate or not, but he sent a translated into Latin. Around Bob uh, Celestine, uh, he he assigned Leo. Yani, you know Leo, which uh, came later on, uh, a Pope of Rome, not immediately after Celestine, but one after him. He was his archdeacon, and he was the head of the commission to. Uh, uh, to, le to lead the investigation. They sent the John Cassian. John Cassian studied it, and then, and then the Rome called for a synod, and they condemned Mastorius. Then after that, he called for... Uh, he also knew uh, the emperor have to know that he sent a copy of the dossier to the emperor. So he had to be aware about the issue. And also, he sent to Bulgaria, Bulgaria or Bulgaria, as they pronounce it, also another dossier. Because Theodosius, the emperor, he became emperor when he was seven years old. And his sister, older sister, Bulgaria, he, she was responsible for him, but he was three years. And when he grew, yani, of course, he didn't need her. But still, she was very influential in the palace. And she didn't marry. And she, uh, uh, she had a privilege in the Byzantine tradition, only the emperor to take communion inside the altar, the only lay person. And she used to, 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 to accompany his her brother, when he was a child, inside the altar to take communion. After Theodosius, does not need a sister to, to guide him, she continued to take communion. When Nastor, but she had to give a reason for that. She speak about her virginity. And it is a privilege for her because she is a virgin. When Nastorius came, he prevented this. That's why she was very angry with him. 
and San Cyril benefited from that. <laughs> يعني طبعا شيء 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 the one which attacked San Dioscoros and all this uh, يعني stories about her role in Chalcedon because after the death of Theodosius suddenly she broke her vow to and she married one a leader and Macrian and became the emperor and she became the empress. But anyway, yeah, I just want to show يعني, how San Cyril prepared the field for the, for the fight. <laughs> يعني, the ballots, the uh, Rome, of course, in his uh, church to, to, be, uh, to be ready. And number five, he worked within the church canon. And never violate in his mind the church canon. Not that violate the canon. And uh, that is why it helped him, didn't fight against him. No, no, no violation of the canon. And he also, number six, he was very patient and resilient. And you know, this is a fight, stick time, and you have to be resilient. Yani not, if you have a setback, not to uh, lose hope. And even he was put in prison, but he continued. He explained the, the, the twelve anathema when the emperor called for a meeting there. Uh, he sent explanation why he was in prison in, in Ephesus. And lastly, he was very objective, not subjective. As always, his whole misfortune knew the blessed memory taught us. We fight not against people, but against thoughts. نحن نحارب أفكار وليس نحارب أشخاص. نحن بالنسبة له was not Nestorius as a person, was not John of Antioch. He has very clear the matter is matter of faith, not matter of persons, because people may, يعني he know from from the Arianism. Arius was condemned in Nicaea. But it was not the end of Arianism. The church suffered for another hundred years after Nicaea uh, from the Arianism. So with this uh, introduction, <laughs> we go now quickly uh, in the, the events which happened. And, and just I, I, I want you to be at the, in the beginning, because some of the details may be feel lost. But it is an interesting story. Uh, so the Nestorius was installed as a bishop, a patriarch of Constantinople in 428. He was an abbot of a monastery near Antioch and had been a child friend of John of Antioch. All these uh, important facts which would reflect later on. And he also close friend with Odoret of Cyrus, which was very supportive to him, a great, uh, great theologian, but he great in his hatred to San Cyril. After San Cyril listened in the Lord, Odoret of Cyrus said, watch his tomb, maybe he arise. <laughs> Whether they said it or not, but that's what in, in some of the book of history, to show how he loved San Cyrilian. Uh, and Andrew of Samo Samosat. And Astorius and his friends were loyal scholars of the Antiochian school of theology. And uh, their main teacher, Theodore of Tarsus, who died in 394, and Theodore of Mopsuista, which they consider the father of Nestorianism that they were condemned in the Council of Constantinople later on. Nestorius was an eloquent preacher and ascetic monk, and he was very zealous against Arianism, and uh, Nestorius. That's why he went to the other side, yani because his defend of the son is the uh, same person of the father. He, he did not accept that is to, to be born from a woman. He said divinity was not born. That's why he didn't like, he didn't agree on Theotokos title. And there's a difference between the two. That is the logic, and the logic is checked by verses. 
and tradition. And the major difference between Nestorius and St. Cyril is this. Both of them are great minds. Both of them studied philosophy. Both of them used logic. But the difference between them, Nestorius used logic if the divinity of the son is the same essence of the father, then divinity not to be born. If divinity is not to be born, then we cannot call it a theotokos. We can call it Christotokos or whatever. Saint Cyril and the other, he said, let us see the verses, what it said about the Holy One who was born, Emmanuel, which the, the Bible called him the Holy One. He called him Emmanuel, God was us. And there's a tradition. Whether any one of the father used the talks before, and he gave a list of that. So he's not inventing things. So the, so the title is not something new to the invention. Then he tries to accept, he, then he go to explain how we can call it Theotokos while we believe divinity not be born. And he spoke about hypostatic union. Maybe when Father George the other speak about his letter to Nostoris will give more explanation on that. But the idea here, the idea here which is important, and that is how you check your mind with verses and tradition. And sometimes have a nice idea. And listen, by Gregor of Nyssa, he believed that is the, the evil people will be accepted later on, logically. But there is no verses to prove that. So, so the logic has to be checked by verses and by the tradition of the church. And that's why St. Cyril, the one he spoke about the creed of Nicaea. And he responded to Nostorius from the creed of Nicaea, appealed to it. And Nostorius also tried to appeal to the creed, but the different interpretation and reading. Yeah. So Nostorius started his commit by attacking heresies in Constantinople, Messianism. He clashed with Augusta, Bolsheria, when, as we mentioned about preventing her to take communion. And a theological dispute happened between the monastic party of Constantinople, led by Archimandrit Basil, supported by Bishop Proclius, and Augusta Belcheria and the others. Uh, and the, the Antiochian clergy, and Nostorius brought with him some of the monks, uh, yani, uh, as because he moved from a monastery in Antioch and he became the patriarch of Constantinople. He brought with him some to help him. And this is led to the clash. For his chaplain, Anastasius, he attacked the tradition of calling St. Mary the Theotokos and he, he thought that the title should be Anthropotokos, of the mother of the man. And the monastic party and the people of Constantinople defended the title Theotokos when the two parties went to Nostorius, he proposed a compromise. He suggested the title of Christotokos for the mother of Christ. Nostorius started a series of lectures in the cathedral to explain the right faith. The, his chaplain, Anastasius, gave the opening lecture and he chose to attack the error of using the title Theotokos. That's how things started in Constantinople. Bishop Boclius, soon make a counterattack with a famous sermon entitled The Virgin Mother of God Theotokos, which was preached, preached in the presence of Nostorius. When the people responded to the sermon with a loud applause, Nostorius was enraged and he began to respond in a critical way. Nevertheless, the congregation did not follow him. Many ascetic and pious monks consider Nostorius' teaching as heretical and did not participate with him in Holy Communion. Among them was the most famous monk, Archimandrit Hepatius, the spiritual teacher of Augusta, Bolsheria, and the royal princes. Now, and as you see, a rift happened in Constantinople with the monks coming with Nostorius and the monks who were there 
uh, and the, the royal family. In the early 428, Mastorius decided to back up his chaplain Anastasius and delivered a series of lectures in the cathedral. Mastorius' lecture was published or written, I mean, described, and circulated outside Constantinople. The title Suotokos was one of the chief targets of the attack of uh, Mastorius, and you can, we have a text of his first sermon. Okay. Information about the dispute and copies of Mastorius' sermon reached St. Cyril in Alexander and Bishop Celestine in Rome. In his Paschal letter of Easter to 428, St. Cyril affirmed the reality of the humanity of Christ and insisted on the singleness of his divine person. He made no reference neither to Constantinople nor to Nostorius. However, as Nostorius' sermon began to be circulated in Egypt and reached the monks in the desert, St. Cyril thought he had the canonical right to interfere because the problem reached his own jurisdiction. St. Cyril composed his famous important letter to the monks, which was circulated through Egypt and reached Constantinople and the Nestorius. Nestorius prepared an answer to St. Cyril's letter. He also intended to send a special message to Alexandria uh, and Rome by confirming the right of Constantinople to act as a supreme court of appeal in the Christian world. And now Nestorius has started, there are people complain about St. Cyril things and also from Rome, and he started to show that he has a responsibility to, uh, uh, as a court on that. Yani just deviating from the issue. Uh, to examine the complaint of two groups of clergy, Alexander and clergy lay, and lay people who came to Constantinople accusing St. Cyril of treating them in a harsh way, and exiled bishop from West who had been condemned by Western Synod on the charge of Pelagianism. And he, these two groups went to Constantinople. That's why in the first letter, to our second letter of St. Cyril to Nostorius, he told him, don't listen to these people, and he refused. They, they complain. Nastoris, in his response to St. Cyril's letter to the monks, considered the letter as an act of aggression. And he sent the letter to the monks, so Nastoris considered he is attacking him. And in his first letter to Nastoris, St. Cyril mentioned that it was Nastoris, not him, who was the cause of dispute. St. Cyril also explained that he was acting to defend the Orthodox faith by responding to the Choir he received from Egypt and outside concerning Nestorius' wrong teaching. St. Cyril spent the winter of 428 and the early 430 deeply studying Nestorius' sermon. He prepared a dossier that included extract from Nestorius' writing as well as extensive patristic writing supporting the Orthodox faith. And we will see the importance of this in the Council of Ephesus. St. Cyril included many writings of Greek fathers, such as St. Athanasius, St. Gregory the Theologian, and Latin fathers like St. Cyprian, St. Ambrose. After translating the whole dossier into Latin, he sent the Greek version to Impox Odosius and its Latin translation to Bishop Celestine of Rome. He then sent the copies to influential people in the palace like Augusta Pulcheria. After Rome received the San Cyril dossier in Easter 430, Bishop Celestine instructed his Archdeacon Leo to set up a formal commission of inquiry. Archdeacon Leo asked John Cassian, John Cassian, he spent time in Egypt, the abbot of Monastery is Marcelia, to study the dossier and compose a response in preparation of of a formal synod that would decide the orthodoxy of Nestorius' teaching. After hearing that Nestorius took communion with a guest bishop who, in a public sermon in the cathedral, anathemized those who called St. Mary Suotokos, St. Cyril wrote his second letter to uh, Nestorius. This letter was one of the main theological documents in the Council of Ephesus and also in the Council of Chalcedon. 
Nastoyev sent a petition to Emperor Theodosius asking him to call for international synod of theology. Yani the one who started to ask for the synod is Nostorius, not St. Cyril. But his idea was different. He, he, he thought that it is uh, important to call for a limited number of theologians to come to debate and come to Constantinople so he can preside. From various ecclesiastical provinces to, to re review the whole theological issue. Nostorius had in mind a limited gathering of expert theologians rather than a general ecumenical council bishop. He also hoped that the gathering would meet in Constantinople so he could preside and gain opportunity to try and condemn St. Cyril. Embox Odysseus informally agreed to call for an international meeting without assigning a place. Nostorius was encouraged and sent a letter to Bishop Celestine describing the Theotokos dispute as a ploy from St. Cyril to avoid his own trial. Nostorius received no response from Rome, as was the case with his two uh, previous letters to Rome. The, this, uh, the clergy at Constantinople sent a petition to Emperor Theodosius arguing for Nostorius' depositions. In August 11, 430, a synod was held at Rome, and Nostorius' teaching was formally condemned as a heretic by Bishop Lestine and the Italian bishop. Bishop Celestine sent the letter to St. Cyril informing him of the decision and asking him to execute the decree of Roman Synod on their behalf. Therefore, St. Cyril in Ephesus, yeah, he, he went to representing Alexander and Rome. So that is the decision came in August 430. In November 430, Emperor Theodosius formally announced his final approval to call for an ecumenical council to consider the whole issue of Nestorian to interverse. He decided that the council could be held at Ephesus in Pentecost of 431. And this has happened in November, which at that year was John Sivens. He appointed Count uh, Candidum the head of the imperial palace guard to represent the emperor and to supervise the proceeding of the council and to keep good order in the city office. However, the emperor instructed him not to interfere in the theological proceeding, although Candidin was instructed to be neutral, he proved to be biased toward Nostorius, because the Herbatiak. In November 430, and after the Rome condemned Nostorius, and after the, uh, the emperor called officially for the council, then uh, uh, San Cyril called his bishop for a synodical meeting, and the Synod of Alexandria formally condemned Nostorius' doctrine, and San Cyril sent his third letter to Nostorius, informing him of the synodical decision and embedded the, to the letter with his famous 12 Anasim. And he sent delegation to, to give this letter uh, to Nostorius. Uh, San Cyril made the acceptance of Anasima against Nostorius a condition to be readmitted. The Council of Ephesus. There's some detail about the arrival of the bishops to show how it took long and because of a dispute about why San Cyril started the the council. Uh, on November 1943, Emperor Sodosis said,